Hello everyone. I am Dr. Sirajul Akfazi. I welcome you in my YouTube channel. Today in this video, I am going to talk about the liquid state. I will discuss in this video general properties of liquid state, liquefaction of gases, vapor pressure of liquids and boiling point. Now friends, what is the general properties of liquids? Liquids are denser than gases and occupy a definite volume and density due to presence of Van der Waals forces. Friends, liquids are relatively incompressible. Liquids are fluids, have no definite shape like gases. So, look at this figure, liquid and gases. Liquid not rigid, no fixed shape and fixed volume not rigid, not fixed shape, no fixed volume. Now friends, unlike gases, liquid do not disperse to fill all space of a container. Liquid have translational motion, that is, liquids move as a whole. The molecules can slide over such each other but they cannot break away from the intermolecular forces while in the liquid state. Now friends, what is the liquefaction of ga pressure, uh, gases? So effect of temperature and pressure. The transitions from a gas to a liquid and from a liquid to a solid depends on both temperature and pressure. When a gas is cooled, it loses some of its kinetic energy in and the velocity of the molecules decreases. If the pressure is applied to the gas, the molecules are brought within the range of Van der Waal forces and pass into the liquid state. Friends, Critical temperature and pressure. What is this? Critical temperature is the temperature above which it is impossible to liquefy a gas regardless of the pressure applied. Critical pressure is the pressure required to qualify or liquefy a gas at its critical temperature. The further a gas is cooled below its critical temperature and less pressure is required to liquefy it. You can see here the triple point critical pressure area, compressible liquid, liquid phase, vapor, supercritical fluid, critical point and critical temperature critical point, critical temperature, critical pressure. So there is a two dot, one dot is triple point and there is another dot and that is the critical point and critical pressure. Now friends, critical temperature and pressure, you know, critical temperature and pressure of water is 374 degrees Celsius and 218 atm respectively. Whereas the corresponding values for helium are 5.2 K and 2.26 atm. The high critical values for water results from the strong hydrogen bonding between the molecules. Conversely, helium molecules are only 
attracted by weak London forces and therefore must be cooled to the extremely low temperature of 5.2 K before it can be liquefied. Above this critical temperature, helium remains a gas no matter what the pressure. Now friends, joule thomson effect adiabatic or uh, adiabatic expansion. If we allow gas to expand rapidly inside a vacuum flask so that no heat enters system, such expansion is known as adiabatic expansion. Friend, energy to expand gas comes from gas itself. Energy is spent to overcome cohesive forces. Friends, you know, as a result of that temperature of gas reduces, this cooling effect is known as joule thomson effect, in commonly JT effect. If we repeat this cycle several times, liquefaction of gas could be achieved. Now friends, aerosols. You know, in pharmaceutical aerosols, a drug is dissolved or suspended in a propellant, a material that is liquid under the high pressure inside the container but forms a gas under normal atmospheric conditions example chlorofluorocarbons nitrogen carbon dioxide parts of the propellant exist as a gas and exerts the pressure necessary to expel the drug friends whereas the remainder exists as a liquid and provides a solution or suspension vehicle for the drugs so you can see the valve you can see the valve cup, you can see the propellant, you can see propellant product mixture, deep tube and P. Now friends, by depressing a valve on the container, some of the drug propellant mixture is expelled owing to the excess pressure inside the container. So outside the container, the liquid propellant reverts to gas and vaporizes off while the drug forms a fine spray. Now friend, vapor pressure of liquid equilibrium vapor pressure. When a liquid is placed in a closed container at a constant temperature, the molecules with the highest energy break away from the surface of the liquid and pass into the gaseous state, evaporate. The sum of the molecules subsequently return to the liquid state, condense. When the rate of condensation equals the rate of vaporization at a definite temperature, the vapor becomes saturated and dynamic equilibrium is established. Friend, the pressure of the saturated vapor above the liquid is then known as equilibrium vapor pressure. Now, friend, classius clapron equations, the vapor pressure of liquid. You know, classius clapron equation is important equations. Any point on one of the curve represent a condition in which the liquid and the vapor exist together in equilibrium liquid and vapor exist together in equilibrium. If the temperature of any of the liquid is increased while the pressure is held constant or if the pressure is decreased while the temperature is held constant, all the liquid will pass into the vapor state. Now friends, classius clapron equation express the relationship between uh, the vapor pressure and the absolute temperature of the liquid. Log P2 divided by P1 is equal to del H vaporization T2 minus T1 divided by 2.303 R T1 T2. Here P1 and P2 vapor pressure at absolute temperature T1 and T2. 
and del Hv is the molar heat of vaporization, the heat absorbed by one mole of liquid when it passes into the vapor state. Now friends, for example, compute the vapor pressure of water at 120 degrees Celsius. The vapor pressure of water at 100 degrees Celsius is 1 atm and the del H is 9720 kilocalorie per mole. So can you put the values and then you can calculate the P2. The classic Clapron equations can be written in a more general form. Log P is equal to del H V divided by 2.303 RT plus constant. A plot of log P against 1 by T results in a straight line. The heat of vaporization of liquid can be calculated from the slope of the line. Now friends, what is the boiling point? What is the definition of boiling point? If a liquid is placed in an open container and heated until the vapor pressure equals the atmospheric pressure, the liquid is start to boil and escape into the gaseous state. You can see the water and air, you can see the water and air, you can see the water and air. So water at 90 degrees Celsius, water at 100 degrees Celsius, it is a tie. Now what above 100 degrees Celsius? On. So, the temperature at which the vapor pressure of liquid equal the external or atmospheric pressure is known as boiling point. The absorbed heat used for to change the liquid to vapor at constant temperature, uh, that is boiling point, is called the latent heat of vaporization. Latent heat of vaporization. You can see this picture is very informative. Now friend, classes Clapron equations. You know the temperature at which the vapor pressure of the liquid equals at atmospheric pressure of 1 atm is called normal boiling point. At higher elevation, the atmospheric pressure decreases and the boiling point is lower. You know friends, at a pressure of 700 mmHg, water boils at 97.7 degrees Celsius at 17.5 mmHg it boils at 20 degrees Celsius. You know the change in boiling point with pressure can be computed by using the glacius clapron equation. Now friends, determine the normal boiling point of chloroform if it is heat of the vaporization is 31.4 kg per mole and it has a vapor pressure of 190 mmHg at 25 degrees Celsius. The normal boiling point of benzene is 18.1 degrees Celsius at 26.1 degrees Celsius. It has a vapor pressure of 100 mmHg. What is the heat of vaporization? So log P2 divided by P1 is equal to del Hv. T2 minus T1 divided by 2.303 R T1 T2. Now, intermolecular forces. The boiling point can be considered the temperature at which thermal agitations can overcome the attractive forces between the molecules of liquid. You know friend, the boiling point of a compound like the heat of vaporization and the vapor pressure depends on the magnitude of the attractive force. Now friend, non-polar substances have low boiling points and low heat of vaporization become because the molecules are held together predominantly by the reclamation force. Friends, molar mole polar molecules like water exhibit high boiling points and high heat of vaporization because they are associated through hydrogen bonds. So, the boiling point of normal hydrocarbons, simple alcohol and carboxylic acid increases with molecular weight because Van der Waals forces becomes greater with increasing number of atoms. Now, friends. Branching of the chain produces a less compact molecules with reduced intermolecular attraction and decrease in the boiling point. You can see. So, alcohols boils at much higher temperature than saturated hydrocarbons of the same molecular weight because of association of alcohol molecules through hydrogen bond, and the boiling point of carboxylic acid are higher than that of alcohol because of acid from dimer through hydrogen bond. 
so friend hope this video will be helpful to you if you like this video then subscribe my channel and thanks for watching